Hello, my name is Jared Gull. I work for Education Services at Juniper Networks. And today I'm going to be sharing some information on deploying MVRP. First and foremost, let's describe what that is. Uh, MVRP, or Multi-VLAN Registration Protocol, is a protocol that dynamically creates and prunes VLANs on trunk ports. Here on the slide, we see a number of switches, access switches, and distribution switches. At the bottom access switches, AS1, 2, 3, and at the top, distribution switches 1 and 2. The connections uh, highlighted with the green dotted lines that interconnect those various switches are trunk ports. MVRP is uh, there to offset some of the administration tasks on provisioning those specific ports, those trunk ports. And we're going to show you how that's done later on here. So why would you want to deploy that? Why would you want to use MVRP? Well, MVRP reduces network administration and overhead. With MVRP enabled, the VLAN definitions and assignments for the trunk ports is done automatically. In other words, you as an administrator don't need to worry about those as long as you've correctly configured and deployed MVRP. What you do need to worry about is the access switch uh, configuration for the access ports. So here at the bottom again, AS1, 2, and 3, we have various access ports connecting to the different hosts for the four different VLANs, VLAN 10, 20, 30, and 40. That would all need to be configured. And then for the trunk ports, simply enable MVRP and uh, on the specific trunk ports there. So this may not be a huge deal in a small network like this. It may not save you a whole lot. But uh, in a larger Layer 2 network, you may see some significant savings. And there's some other benefits some, uh, with the auto provisioning part of MVRP. There's some definite advantages that will highlight here on the next couple slides. So on this slide, again, we have the same basic network. Um, and uh, assuming we do not yet have MVRP, let's describe the behavior um, that we would see for traffic flowing in this network. Here on the left, we see host A, which is associated with VLAN 10, connected to the AS1 access switch. It's sending traffic. Uh, let's qualify that traffic. This is traffic that would be flooded throughout the Layer 2 domain. Um, such as broadcast traffic, unknown unicast traffic, or multicast traffic. So the default behavior there is that traffic would be sent to the root bridge, and then the root bridge would continue to flood that traffic onto any downstream devices, distribution switches, and or access switches that uh, have for which it has trunk ports supporting and servicing VLAN 10. So let's do a what-if scenario here. Let's say access switch 3 has a host, host I in this case, and that host leaves, leaves the network for some reason, thus leaving access switch 3 without any interested hosts for VLAN 10. Well, in a normal situation, again, without MVRP, you would, uh, that trunk port connecting DS1 and AS3 would not be changed. The configuration would remain intact. So the end result there is that that traffic, even without any interested hosts on AS3, that broadcast unknown unicast or multicast traffic would continue to be sent or flooded down that trunk port. This, of course, is not ideal. We're uh, wasting bandwidth unnecessarily. We're also 
bothering AS3 unnecessarily, requiring it to process and eventually purge or, or discard that traffic without any true value there. So with MVRP, let's flip that over. So now if we, if we implemented MVRP and host I again disappeared, so we're taking the, continuing the same example this time with MVRP enabled. Uh, so access switch three would notify distribution switch one, uh, telling that distribution switch that it does not have any interested listeners on VLAN 10. Thus, the uh, trunk port's not, no longer servicing um, a VLAN for which uh, access switch three does not, does not service. Um, and DS1, uh, in this case, would no longer forward that bum traffic down that trunk port. So the end result is a more efficient network and uh, we're cutting out some unnecessary processing and consumption of bandwidth on the, the trunk port there. Okay, hopefully at this point you have some basic idea of what MVRP is, how it can benefit you and uh, make things a little bit better in your network. Now, what I'd like to do is illustrate how to deploy MVRP in a uh, basic network. Here we have three switches. Really, this is a subset of the topology we used in the previous illustrations there. We have two access switches, AS1 and AS2, and one distribution switch in this case, DS1. And we have the four VLANs, V10, V20, V30, V40, um, and uh, access switch one and uh, access switch two are servicing those four different VLANs. Okay, so with that in mind, um, I'd like to start by just providing a baseline of where we're at. We do not yet have MVRP enabled on any of the three switches, access switch one, two, or distribution switch one. Um, but I do have the interfaces configured for layer two operations uh, as either access uh, ports or trunk ports, depending on the designation. So I'll just show you the VLANs configuration on AS1. So we have the four VLANs and their respective access ports on AS1. AS2 has a, uh, the, the same basic configuration, so I'm not going to show that here. But I do want to point out that V10, 20, 30, 40, um, none of those VLANs have the trunk port, um, which is uh, port 1 in this case. I do, however, have uh, port 1 configured as a trunk port but currently no VLANs are assigned to that trunk port. Okay, and then on distribution switch one, you can see here I have no VLANs configured, and then I have uh, port one and port two configured for layer two operations with the family ethernet switching, and uh, both of them configured as trunk ports. Okay, so what I want to do, we'll go back to AS1 here. What I want to do now is enable MVRP on all three switches. And to enable MVRP, is, it's quite simple. It's a one-string, uh, one-line command. Set protocols MVRP, and we'll activate that with the commit command. We'll do the same thing on DS1. And over to AS2 as well. Okay. And now we'll go back to AS1. So with MVRP enabled, we'll see what the results are. If I issue the run show VLANs command, well, I can see that I'm in the same basic situation here. There's no uh, 
there's currently no association of the trunk port, port one, with any of those defined VLANs. So let's uh, let's just investigate a little bit with MVRP command. There's a, an operational show MVRP command that we'll use. And here I see that MVRP is in fact enabled. Um, but you can see here that the trunk port is not yet enabled. So one thing we missed, and I did this intentionally just to point this out, is not only do you have to enable MVRP, you have to enable it on the trunk port. So um, set protocols, uh, MVRP, and then the interface name. So in this case, it'll be port 1. Whoops, I missed the interface designation there. So interface and then the interface name. And we'll commit that. <clears throat> and then we'll do the same thing on DS1. Uh, interface, we've got port 1 and port 12 on DS1. While that's committing, we'll go over to AS2. And here we just have port 12 on AS2. So interface giggy 0012.0. OK, so we've got that enabled for all of the trunk ports in our topology here. And let's go back to AS1. And let's look at the results with the operational show VLANs command. So here we can see, we can now see that port 1 is associated with all four VLANs. And the same should be true over on AS2. Which it is for port 12. That's a good sign. Um, now we'll go to the distribution switch. Now remember, on the distribution switch, we actually never configured any VLANs. We don't have to configure those VLANs. Uh, that's part of the, uh, the benefit here with the auto-provisioning. So you will notice some differences here when we look at the, v, uh, the VLANs on DS1. Show VLANs. You'll see that we have four VLANs with the appropriate tags, tag 10, 20, 30, and 40. And we do have both trunk ports, port 1 and port 12, associated with both of those, v, uh, with all four of those VLANs. But notice the name. Um, so with MVRP on the distribution switches, again, where we do not actually configure any VLANs, um, a name is auto-generated, and this is the format. You're going to see a, an, um, an MVRP and then the tag identifier. So in this case, MVRP10, MVRP20, MVRP30, and MVRP40. So with this in place, um, let's go back to our diagram. With this in place, these trunk ports connecting the access switches with DS1 can now service all four of these VLANs, V10, 20, 30, and 40. So all of those should be serviced at this point. Um, I do want to show the retraction or the, the uh, again, uh, an aspect of the auto-provisioning uh, function within MVRP. So on access switch one here, I'm going to disable port 6. So essentially, I'm going to take this out of the mix, which would, um, which would uh, disable VLAN 10 from that trunk port, the port, uh, port 1 trunk. So what I want to do is uh, let's just set interface uh, giggy. Dash zero zero six 
to save. We'll commit that. So you can see that port 6 is now no longer active. You see the that the asterisk is no longer present there in this output. Um, and if we jump to the distribution switch at this point, uh, keep in mind that there's constant communication going on, MVRP related communication, anytime something changes within the topology. Um, but jumping to the distribution switch here, we're on DS1. You can see that uh, port 1 is no longer associated with MVRP. So the result here, again, this, this is uh, related to the, the efficiency benefit. Any traffic received on trunk port 12 from AS2 um, related to MVRP uh, or the VLAN here, MVRP10, will no longer be sent down port 1. So anyway, that is the, uh, that's the demonstration. It's quite simple to deploy. It can definitely save some, uh, some keystrokes, time, and hassle, especially in larger networks. And uh, I, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, presentation, this learning bite. And to learn more, you can visit uh, the various resources listed here on the slide and um, specifically uh, attend some of our uh, training courses where we cover this type of thing and, and other uh, EX switch features in, in detail. Thank you. Have a great day. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.